The Cavalcade of America, starring John Hodiak. Tonight, the DuPont Company brings you Page One, starring John Hodiak on The Cavalcade of America. First, here is Gain Whitman. Good evening. A real contribution to America's egg production record is made by DuPont's Delsterol D activated animal sterile. An ingredient of poultry feeds, Delsterol is a source of the sunshine vitamin D, contributing to healthier flocks and more eggs. And just recently, last March, the DuPont company announced another price reduction on Delsterol, the seventh since 1939. This latest price reduction is further proof of how DuPont serves agriculture through research in the laboratory, and in the manufacture of such essential ingredients as Delsterol, one of DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry. And now, page one, starring John Hodiak as Joseph Pulitzer on The Cavalcade of America. What do you want, lad? I'd like to ask you a question, please. Be quick about it, then. I'm busy. How soon will we be docking? In the morning. Morning? But I must get ashore now. <laughs> That's so? Well, lad, there's only one way to do it, and you'll get wet trying it. One way? Thank you. Huh? Hey, stop. Come back here, you crazy kid. Stop right here. Stop it. Pretty young fool jumped overboard. He's swimming for sure. That was 1864. The lad who was so eager to get to America enlisted immediately in the Union Army to fight for the country he had come to as an immigrant, 17 years old, eager. For one year he fought. Then, the war over, Joseph Pulitzer walked the streets with other discharged soldiers seeking a job. Excuse me. Yeah? My name is Joseph Pulitzer. I've been in America a year. I heard that this is where they're hiring men to go to Louisiana. You heard right. What kind of work is there in Louisiana? Plantation work. How would I get there? See that man over there? The one in the seaman's cap? Yes. For five dollars, he'll take you down in his boat. Oh, five dollars. Five dollars too much for you? <laughs> five cents would be too much. Hmm, that bad, huh? I have no money, but I want to work. Well, do what I did. Sell your overcoat. There's a place down the street they'll pay you five for it. Good. In Louisiana, I won't need it anyway. All right, men. Line up one at a time. Pay your passage money at the desk up front. Five dollars a head. All aboard for Louisiana, the land of opportunity. Make good money on the plantations. Get a hundred times your five back again. Can you wait for me? Huh? Why, sure. Anything to oblige, son. How long would you like me to wait? Until you take care of your family estate and settle your affairs? <laughs> no. No, just until I run down the street and sell my overcoat to get the five dollars. Well, now, that's different. And tell you what, son... Just to show you my heart's in the right place, I'll take your coat and you can hop right aboard. How's that? Here. Here it is. And thank you very much. Uh, how long do we got to wait here for the other boat to pick us up? The captain said not more than a couple of hours, Ed. Look, Joe, it's been over that now. There's something fishy about this. But he explained. He told us that he'd take us as far as this levee, then another boat would pick us up. Yeah, I heard him. But where's the other boat? Wait a minute. Here comes somebody now. Everything will be all right. Hiya, man. Oh, hi. Uh, what, uh, what, what's going on here? Where's the boat? Boat? What are you talking about? There was to be a boat to take us the rest of the way to Louisiana. Oh, so that's the game. Well, son, you're barely outside of St. Louis. Yes, we know that, and you're not from the boat? No, no, I'm, I'm a reporter from a newspaper in town. Now, we got wind of this crowd here, and I nosed out to see what's going on. Oh, well, each of us paid $5 for passage to Louisiana to get jobs there. The captain of the boat we were on put us ashore here. Just like that, huh? Yes. Well, I, uh, I hate to bust up your tour, son, but uh, no boat stop here. Something tells me you men were taken in by a slicker. Uh, you're sure of that? Of course. This isn't the first time. Then... 
We're just stranded here? Uh, I'm afraid so. For the dirty, thieving dogs. And each of us a veteran. The dirty crooks. That's what we get for trusting people. That's what we get for risking our necks. Look, I say let's go back into town and look up those crooks and beat them up and hang them. Uh, no! No, wait! Wait! Would that do us any good? Yeah. Why not? It'll do my soul a lot of good. You're wrong, Ed. Very wrong. What are you so high and mighty about? You sold your coat and for what? You risked your nick in the war for what? It's no good, Joe, and you know oh, it. please, listen to me. Most of you were born right here in America. I wasn't. It hasn't been more than a year ago that I jumped from a ship to fight for the country that I've come to love. That's a lot of rot. No, it's not. Ed, we were swindled, yes. But we mustn't look at the men who swindled us as being America. There are good and bad in every country. Show me the good in this. Well, I can't do that because there is no good in it. But you said we were veterans. Each of us fought to save the Union. Well, why should we have fought just a short time ago to preserve it and now be willing to become a mob and destroy part of it because one man had wronged us? America's much bigger than those little men, Ed, much bigger than we are. If we want to fight against wrong and evil, let's fight with the greatest weapon we have, our own democracy. Oh. I'm, I'm sorry. That was a speech. I hate speeches. Uh, what's your name, son? Joseph Pulitzer. Look, uh, do you think you could put those words on paper? You mean write them? Mm-hmm, for my paper. My boss is Carl Shorts. Carl Shorts? General Carl Shorts? Yeah. Well, he was my old army commander. Well, good, come on, then. You, you write that the way you said it, and we'll see what can be done about this business. <laughs> This is good, Pulitzer, very good. And you'll do something about the swindle, Mr. Shorts? And more. I'll give you a job right now. Mr. Shorts, I've got a story on that closed political meeting. You what? You got in there? Yes. <laughs> is it funny? You got in where every other reporter on my paper failed. Joe Pulitzer, demon reporter, the boy wonder. <laughs> Tell us your secret, Joe. Well, I guess He's I... got no secret, and all of you listen to me. From now on, don't kid, Pulitzer. Copy him. Young man. Young man. Hmm? You. Oh, I, I beg your pardon, ma'am. I didn't know you were talking to me. Well, I am. Must you eat that apple in the library? Oh, I'm sorry. Was it disturbing you? I've never heard a noisier apple. Mm. <laughs> Joseph. Joseph. Oh, hello, Udo. Joseph, you are my dear friend, yes? I am your dear friend. You are my dear friend. Then I beg you, stop eating apples in the library where I am in charge. Oh, do you want me to take my apples to another one? <laughs> Please, don't joke. Do you want me to lose my job? Of course not, Udo. I'll stop. Now, and one more thing. I, I cannot let you stay in the library anymore after closing hours. But I have so little time to read all these books. In the morning, I have to rush my breakfast, sometimes even forget my coffee to keep you from freezing to death on the steps outside. And at night, I'm late going home because I cannot get you out of here. Udo, a man is allotted only 24 hours a day. That is little enough to read all the books I have to read. <sighs> that is another thing, law books. Why should a promising journalist like you read law books? Udo, if I wanted to become a doctor, what would I read? Doctor books, but... But I... I read law books. Therefore, I want to become a lawyer. You are crazy. With a career such as you have in store in the newspaper business, you want to give it up for law. That's right. It will take such a long time. Wasted time. I don't think so, Udo. You are crazy. You should not do it. You should... Udo. Udo, listen to me a moment. Why? Why should I listen to foolishness? It's not foolish. You see, America has given me the opportunity to become what I want to be. So, I'm going to study law and earn my way by being a journalist until I am a lawyer. Now, where else in the world could I study for one thing while earning my living in another? Only in America, Udo. Only in America. <laughs> Udo, Udo, Joseph, why must you always wake these people up? Where can we talk? Talk? Um, 
Yeah. Uh, come behind the section on civic government. No one ever uses those books. I thought you were in Washington, Joseph. I'm back. Yeah, I know. So does everyone else in here. It's wonderful, Udo. Wonderful. She's wonderful. Who? Who? Where? Her name is Kate Davis. She's the most charming. She's the... Udo, there aren't enough books in this library to describe her, to do her credit. If you had read something beside law books, you would know. Udo, I'm going to get married. Ah? Uh? Yes. <laughs> Good. Now I will be able to close the library once in a while. <laughs> you don't seem enthusiastic about it. But I am, Joseph. I hope you will be very happy. It would be impossible to be otherwise with her. I'm glad for you. We're going to Europe on our honeymoon. And, and when we come back, I'm going to become a lawyer. That again, Joseph. I will talk to her. I will tell her to keep you from but doing you that. You can try, but my mind's made up. But I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about her, about Kate. Wait till you see her. You'll fall in love with her too, Udo. <laughs> Foolishness, foolishness. And I thought when you came back from your honeymoon, you would not remember this lawyer business, Joseph. Udo, more than ever, my mind's made up. Now listen, don't tell Kate, but I've picked out my offices. I want them to be a surprise for her. Ah. Joseph Pulitzer, attorney at law. Joseph Pulitzer, fish out of water. It's like Kate says. You are a newspaper man and already famous. You will smother on the briefs, appeals, act. The only way I could be happy in the newspaper business is to have my own paper. And there are too many in St. Louis right now. No, it would mean skimping, saving. I don't want Kate to go through that. I have met her. She would do it, Joseph. I know that. And that's exactly the reason I'm going into law. Kate would do anything if she thought it would help me. And... Yeah? And what? What's that crowd in front of the courthouse? Hmm. I don't know. Cabby. Cabby, drive over to the courthouse. Oh, it is not trouble. The crowd is too orderly. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I have been authorized to put up for sale the best property and physical assets of the defunct St. Louis dispatch. Udo, the dispatch is being auctioned. Be Just the... another paper gone broke, Joseph. Gentlemen, sure hmm. you can get an opening Let's here. see who bids. What do I hear? What's the opening date? $1,000. That was Mr. Alexander. He's no fool. We'd better go, huh? Let's see who gets it. Who $2,000. That was Mr. Grayson. He's no fool either. Who make it $3,000? $2,500. $2,500. What did I do? <laughs> what you always wanted to do, Joseph. Maybe someone else will bid $3,000. If anyone says three, I'll keep my mouth closed. Mr. Alexander. Mr. Grayson, will you say three? Why doesn't someone say something? All right. Going once. Going twice. Going three times. And so. So to Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Pulitzer for $2,500. <laughs> Udo. Udo, I didn't mean that. Why did I do it? I want to be a lawyer. <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure, so you bought a newspaper. <laughs> you wanted to be a lawyer so badly that you All right. To... You win. But what'll Kate say? Kate, uh, she knows you, Joseph. Kate will say good. All right. I've bought a newspaper. But I've bought something else, Udo. I've bought responsibility and a duty to the people. Very well. I'll make it the best newspaper I can. You are listening to John Hodiak as Joseph Pulitzer in page one on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Having purchased the St. Louis Dispatch at an auction and merged with the Post, another St. Louis newspaper, Joseph Pulitzer determines to make his paper the finest possible. In his office, he is reading an editorial he has just dictated. And the Post-Dispatch will continue its fight against corruption, vice, and all the shameful practices so prevalent. Hmm. That sound all right, John? A little strong, J.P. You see, before the merger, the Post office... This is the Post-Dispatch now, John. Yes, but the people you write these editorials about are... Well, they won't take it lying down. The people depend upon the freedom of the press. It's part and parcel of our democracy. When a newspaper fails to do its duty, when it fails to use its freedom, it may as well go out of business. No, 
Now, what time is it, John? Mm, almost midnight. Midnight? Mm -hmm. Kate will be worried I didn't know it was that late. Where's my hat? Right here. Thanks. And don't set that editorial up yet. I may want to add more to it. Good night. Good night, J.P. Cab. Cabby. Sorry, sir. This is taken. Oh. Hey. Hey there. Yes, are you talking to me? You. Say, uh, you're Joseph Pulitzer, ain't you? Yes. Yes, I am. I thought so. That's him, Mike. Let's go. Hey, what? Let go of me. What are you trying to... Maybe do? you'll go easy after this, Mr. J.P. Uh, See how you like it. Let me... is it? Four o'clock. Afternoon? Yeah. Would you tell Mark to get the carriage? Three days and better enough. A few little bruises and scratches. A few bruises and scratches? It was more than that. The doctor says you were a lucky man. Poppycock, I've got to get back to the paper. The doctor said... That... All I've got are these headaches. They'll go away in a few weeks, maybe days. Joseph, you are leaving for New York next week. New York? But I can't... And from New York, you are leaving for Europe, and you are not coming back until you are better. Udo? Udo, you in here? Yeah, Joseph. Now, uh, have you checked the passports? Uh, you have seen to the tickets? Oh, and... uh, well, yes. Why do you say it like that? Oh, um, I ran into Jay Gould, a great financier. Mm -hmm. But a little out of step as a publisher. <laughs> Then you lose for a half hour in New York and you run right into the newspaper mm. business. Uh, you know, Udo, that newspaper of Gould's, the New York World, mm -hmm. it's not in bad shape physically, but as a paper, it's a little run down. Why don't you look at me when you talk? Joseph, what did you do? I uh, bought the New York World. You, you, you bought... But, but you were supposed to rest to go to Europe. Not now, later. Your health is fine. You... Kate, what will Kate say? I know. Do you think she'll be angry, Udo? Kate angry? <laughs> no. She will smile and unpack. John! John! Did you call me, J.P.? Yes, I did. Did you check this story? The world printed it. It's true. Then it's a shame. A crying, miserable shame. Well, J.P., The I... Statue of Liberty lying in the marshes of France, John. Bought by the people of France for this country and Congress won't appropriate money for a pedestal. Well, no one can do anything about that. The world can. The world will make Congress see that... that... Yes? No. Not Congress. John, I'll write to the real strength of America. I don't understand. Look out the window. Hmm? There's the real strength of America, the people. But what about them? What can they do? Listen. The people of France, tradesmen, laborers, children, paid $250,000 to have Bartoli make that statue, and the people of America will buy the pedestal for it. Joseph, you have been driving yourself night and day, writing editorials, reading letters from contributors, answering them. It's got to be done. Yeah, yeah. But Kate is worried. Very worried. This will all be over in a little while. Why don't you let someone else do it? Someone else? Wait. Miss Stevens? Miss Stevens? Yes, sir? Bring those letters in, please. Right away, Mr. Pulitzer. You'll see why I can't let someone else do it, Udo. But you're not well, Joseph. I'm just tired. The letters, Mr. Pulitzer. Thank you. Oh, don't go, Miss Stevens. Sit down. Now, Udo, pick one of those letters. Anyone. Now read it. Wait, I will turn up the light. No, the light hurts my eyes. Can you read in this light, Miss Stevens? Why, I, I think so, Mr. Pulitzer. The light hurts your eyes? Joseph, you've got to see a doctor. Never mind that now. Go ahead, Miss Stevens, read that letter. To the world, New York, New York. Enclosed, you will please to find 15 cents to help buy the pedestal for the Statue of Liberty. I know 15 cents is not much, but maybe it will help some. Yours truly, Edward... Rizik. 
15 cents. Udo, it was probably money he could have used for food. Anything but this. Yeah, it's wonderful. Take another one, Miss Stevens. Anyone. Dear World Newspaper, I am seven years old. Here's three cents. For which kindly accept my contribution to the pedestal for the statue from France. My mother will give me some Sunday money tomorrow. And I will send that to you also, too. It is... The people, Udo. The people. It's their country. Their liberty. Wonderful, Joseph. Wonderful. The Statue of Liberty. Congratulations, J.P. It's a great thing. A great thing. Thank you. Udo. Yeah? Tell me. What does it look like? What What does what look like? The statue. Why, you know, you saw it unveiled. No. I didn't see anything. You, you didn't see? I suddenly felt as though there was a deep fog. Then it was dark. Very dark, Udo. I... Oh, Joseph, I... I will get Kate. No. No, I, I want to tell her myself. Oh, it's... It's such a tragedy. A tragedy? No. I won't pretend that it's nothing at all, but... I thank God I've been allowed to go this far. I didn't have to see that statue, Udo... What it stands for, no man can see, unless he loves liberty. And I saw that. Now, let's go home. Yeah, Joseph? Udo, I want you to promise me something. Oh, of course, anything. I've had a dream, my friend. And Kate and you must help me see it come to realization. A school for journalism. A school? Yes, Yes, a school. We'll endow it with the necessary funds. Butler of Columbia University has already consented. We'll have traveling scholarships for young students. And Udo will have a special gold medal award for outstanding contributions to the American press. What do you think of that? Oh, it, 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 it's splendid, Joseph. And there'll be other prizes for drama, music, cash prizes... But for the press to inspire the men who will write the news, there must be that special award. Oh, Udo. There's so much to do. So much to do. And, and, oh, my friend, Joseph. Here, here, none of that. Come on, Udo. Let's go. I've got lots of work to do. And Joseph Pulitzer's dream came true. Each year, the Pulitzer Prize for Journalism epitomizes the craftsmanship and brilliance of the American press and the men who write the news. Men who remember Joseph Pulitzer's creed. Our republic and its press will rise or fall together. Only an able, disinterested, public-spirited press with the trained intelligence to know the right and the courage to do it can preserve that public virtue without which popular government is a sham and a mockery. Zodiac will be back in just a moment, but first, here is Gain Whitman speaking for DuPont. To paraphrase an old proverb, all is not grass that's green. The most beautiful green lawn can become a nightmare to its proud owner when it's plagued by those bright green devils of the plant world, weeds. Weeds, let us face it, do not love human beings. A dog may be man's best friend, but a weed certainly is not. Weeds are sly, persistent, 
and stubborn. Now, to be serious, until recently, there has been little you or I or anyone else could do about lawn weeds, except dig the darn things up and then watch them grow back again. Today, however, government and other laboratories are conducting research in plant problems like the weed problem. One of these laboratories is that of the Boyce Thompson Institute for Plant Research at Yonkers, New York, where a conference on world food problems will open on May 15th. Our DuPont Experimental Station also engages in plant research, and the DuPont Company manufactures two chemical compounds to kill weeds. One of these, prepared especially for use on lawns, is DuPont Carmex, a 2-4-D weed killer that comes in handy tablet form. It kills broad-leaved weeds without harming most grasses. Just one Carmex tablet dissolved in two quarts of water makes enough solution to kill the weeds in a hundred square feet of average lawn for less than a nickel. All you do is sprinkle, or better yet, spray the solution on your lawn. Full directions are given with each package. For people who have trouble with poison ivy, poison oak, sumac, and other man-sized weeds, the DuPont Company manufactures Amate Weed Killer. Sprayed on the leaves, Amate poisons the root system, and the kill is permanent. If you can't get these products at your local dealers, write DuPont for information. Carmex and Amate weed killers are two of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. Here again is John Hodiak. Thank you, John Heaston. Next Sunday, May 18th, has been designated by the president as I Am an American Day. And Joseph Pulitzer was typical of so many immigrants to this country who became fine Americans and citizens. He proved that America affords equal opportunity to everyone, whether native or foreign-born. That's so right, John. And your portrayal proved that America has quite a fine actor in one John Hodiak. Thank you. Incidentally, uh, how about tips on movies? You got any? I have. Ever heard of... High Barbary. It's an MGM picture, isn't it? It certainly is. Be sure and see it, John, and you won't be disappointed. I will. And here's a tip for you in radio. What is it? Ever know that Abraham Lincoln once played detective? You're kidding. No, I'm not. Listen to Cavalcade next Monday night and find out. And just to whet your listening appetite, Lincoln played sleuth while he was a trial lawyer. You'll hear all about it in Witness by Moonlight. And Lincoln will be played by Joseph Cotton. Thanks for the tip, John Heaston. And thank you for your fine performance tonight, John Hodiak. Music for tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. Our Cavalcade story was written by Charles Freeman. Featured in the cast with John Hodiak was Jack Christian as Udo. This is John Heaston inviting you to listen next week to Joseph Cotton in Witness by Moonlight. And in coming weeks, you'll hear Robert Young, Lee Bowman, Una Merkel, and other famous Hollywood stars on the Cavalcade of America. Brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. Next week's broadcast will originate from Newark, New Jersey. Cavalcade of America came to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.